uh, the the first video I'm going to make here I'm going to try to make it actually very not mathematical just sort of diagrams and things like that an overview of what I what I mean because I see flat earthers calculating three different types of curvature and using the same formula for each of them over and over again and saying see that's not what we see so therefore the earth is flat um, when really it's the mathematics that they're having a problem with so um, I'm gonna start first of all by trying to tell you what I mean by three different kinds of curvature um, that they're trying to calculate there are three different ones that I've seen that they use them interchangeably and they're just not interchangeable and I'm going to show you some diagrams to show you that they're not interchangeable the first one of those which and I will will cover how to calculate it in part two is bulge height in part three we're going to be calculating the drop height and in part four I'm going to be calculating curvature obstruction height and curvature obstruction height is usually the one that you see people talk about because it's the one where you look off over a distant horizon and you and you can see something that you don't think you that you should be able to see um, and a lot of times if you actually do the math behind it properly you will see that yeah you should be able to see that um, so I'm going to talk uh, right now I'm just going to do an overview on what these three things are and so we'll first start talking about bulge height. So bulge height is if we take the two points on the earth and remember this is going from the earth's surface this doesn't bulge height has nothing to do with how high you are above the earth it's only from one place on the on the globe to another place on the globe. So if you were to dig a tunnel through the earth directly from one place to another straight line so that you could shine a laser through it um, how far below the Earth's surface would it be at its highest point? That is the bulge height. Uh, now, the bulge height is what, if you've looked into the um, Samuel Robotham uh, Bedford level experiment thing, um, the bulge height is the second thing that they took a look at when the, when the surveyor came in and they set three barges floating and they put barge one right here with a pole with something on top of it and then barge two was a, a little further along and they put the same height pole on top of it and then barge three was a little further along still and what they did and remember is the same height pole then they sighted from the first to the third and lo and behold they found that the middle one was above it now that shouldn't happen if the earth was flat but it makes perfect sense if the earth is a globe and that would be because of bulge height it would be because it's bulging up in between one point to the next point so that is how I've seen where that can be measured and it was measured successfully in the Robotham experiment um, but any of the flat earth videos that I've seen don't mention that little one they all mention where he uh, got down in the water and looked and could still see the boat okay. uh, the next one is drop height now drop height is the one that you can on short distances successfully um, calculate with the 8 inches per mile squared on short distances. Um, so here's what drop height looks like. Drop height would be if I, if I took a laser and I shone it straight out, I leveled it where I am and I shone it straight out and if there was somebody else on the globe over here how high above them would that laser be how high has the earth dropped away so that that laser is now high in the sky and this is this is the kind of thing that um, the new PBS series uh, or not PBS BBC anyway um, genius with uh, Stephen Hawking this is what they did in the boat they leveled a laser at the lake shore and shone it straight out and then they went out in a boat to see where they could get it and of course when you have a boat right here it hit it there but you take it out a little bit further and it hits the boat a lot higher or in the case of the series for the Stephen Hawking series it didn't hit the boat at all they had to put another board up to try and get it because it was too high so that is one way that you can measure that direct curvature now even between those two curvatures and those are the ones that I, I don't see them talked about as often um, you'll notice that we have a drop height and a bulge height um, and there, it's significantly different even when they're the same two points on the Earth's surface that we're going across we have the drop height and we have the bulge height and they are significantly different. 
So you cannot calculate them both the same way. The bulge height is not 8 inches per mile squared. Same thing goes for the next one, earth curvature obstruction. Now, when you are standing looking at something, you're going to be able to see it unless something gets in between you and it. That's just the way it goes. Light travels um, mostly in a straight line. There is some refraction that goes on, uh, and it's not stopped. It, it's going to get to you unless something comes between you and it. Now, when you're looking out um, on the globe, the only thing that there is, especially if you're looking out over water, the only thing there is to get between you and it is is the surface that is well, bulging up. So if I'm standing here on the globe and I'm looking towards this distance, let's say that this is a building over here, if I'm looking towards that distant building, um, here's my line of sight and it's going way over here. Now I'm going to be able to see all of this up here but when I scan down, now suddenly the earth curvature, see where it is tangent here? Now the earth is, is in the way. So I'm not going to be able to see anything that's down here. So if I'm low to the ground, I'm getting a lot of obstruction here. But if I increase my height, obviously I'm going to see all of this. How far down am I going to be able to see? Well, you got to keep going down until the curve of the earth gets in your way. So down, 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 there. Now the curve of the earth is in the way. I can't see through the curve of the earth. See how I'm going, that my line of sight is going through the curve, through the earth, can't do that. So it's right here. So anything that's below my line of sight is going to be below the curvature of the earth, going to be beyond the horizon, um, and I can't see it. Um, now this one is a lot more difficult to calculate and it definitely does not work with the 8 inches per mile squared. The 8 inches per mile squared, remember, means that I'm on the surface of the earth looking straight out and of course if it's terribly far away I may not see it at all because it's way below my horizon or my eye, eye level. Right. Um, and so I'm going to stop that there. The first thing I'm going to look at to actually calculate is going to be bulge height. Um, but that is, those are the three things that I see that flat earthers use interchangeably. And as you can see by these diagrams, and all these diagrams are the same size, by the way, when you flat, flip through them, you can just see that changing. All of my slides are exactly the same. You can see that it's drastically different from one to the other. Um, so we'll leave it there for right now.